don't think you quite realize what you got here. So why don't you just ruminate whilst I illuminate the possibilities? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Robin Williams movies. Hello! Ah! Oh, I'm sorry to frighten you, dear. I must look like a yeti in this getup. For this list, we're looking at the filmography of the late, great Robin Williams and looking at the best comedies and dramas of his decades-long career. Please say hello in the comments below. Number 20. Popeye Robin Williams transitioned from stand-up comedian to Mork and Mindy TV star in 1978. Two years later, he made his feature film debut in Popeye. And I never hurt nobody, and I'll never tell a lie. Top to me bottom, from the bottom to me top. That's the way it is, till the days of that drop. What am I? I am what I am. Hollywood icon Robert Altman helmed the live-action adaptation of the famous cartoon. Juxtaposing musical numbers with slapstick comedy, Popeye is a rather uneven effort by Altman. But there are few actors in movie history with the comic chops of Robin Williams. Um, one tough gazooka stead, hates all paluka stead, ain't on the up and square. Rap biffs em and buffs em and always out roughs em and none of them gets nowhere. He made absolute mincemeat of the physical comedy and the film did well at the box office, even though it wasn't a blockbuster. To this day, its decades-long home video run has made it a cult classic. Number 19, Death to Smoochie. Friends come in all sizes, take it from me. Golly gee, size never matters when you want some friendly patter from a pal who is true. Imagine if the actors on Sesame Street went to war with Barney the Dinosaur. That essentially is the plot of the 2002 comedy Death to Smoochie. William's Rainbow Randolph is a children's television star who misuses alcohol and falls from grace after taking a bribe. When he spirals and loses it all, he blames his replacement Smoochie for ruining his life. I, I don't think you want to hurt anyone here. Oh, go blow yourself, Martha. Look what you've done to this place. It's all Diane Fossey. When I lived here, it was Bob Fossey. Williams is at his most hilariously deranged in this revenge comedy. Death to Smoochie's great sin is that it was probably made a decade too early. The clever, acerbic, cynical comedy that was slammed by critics at the time has become a staple of modern comedy. Number 18. Hook What would happen if Peter Pan gave up on Neverland and decided to grow up? Well, you might end up with Robin Williams as the portrayal of his grown-up self, for one. <laughs> we'll take it. Steven Spielberg directs an all-star cast with Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook and Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. Even Glenn Close got an uncredited cameo as a bearded pirate. Yes, you made a boo boo. I did. Mm. I did. The boo box. No, I, no, boo the boo box. Yeah. Williams is in his sweet spot in Hook, with fast talking humor, physical comedy, and a ton of heart. His Peter Pan is a victim of modern adulthood. He's fallen prey to the grind at the expense of his own family and happiness. It's a sweet story about Peter rediscovering his inner child to save his son from generational trauma. Think one happy thought and fly like me. Mommy! My dad. Peter Pan. Number 17, What Dreams May Come. Being reborn. See, that's the one thing we can't have here finding each other all over again, falling in love. What Dreams May Come is an intensely emotional adaptation of the Richard Matheson novel. Robin Williams plays Chris Nielsen, a pediatrician who meets artist Annie Collins and falls in love. Years later, the couple lose their son and daughter in a tragic car accident. Chris, too, eventually dies in another accident. His confused spirit lingers, accidentally tormenting Annie with his presence. Eventually, Chris reaches his own personal heaven. But when he discovers that Annie has also died and is suffering from her guilt, he descends like Dante to save her. Together at the end, by that lake in your painting, it was our heaven, see? There's lots of things to miss. The film is a visually stunning masterpiece. Williams handles the dark subject matter with heartbreaking sincerity. If you want to catch up on what dreams may come, do not forget the tissues. Number 16, Night at the Museum. 
While the Night at the Museum franchise continues to grow, the original featured Ben Stiller as a late-night security guard in a history museum magically come to life. Robin Williams plays his sidekick and mentor, the statue of Teddy Roosevelt. Some of us are just ordinary. No, you're not ordinary. For the love of Gideon, stop wallowing in self-pity. Every great journey begins with a single footstep. If you could teach the inhabitants to get along, they wouldn't need to be locked up night after night. Night at the Museum is a solid family comedy. While it wasn't a big hit with critics, it's hard to find fault whenever Teddy appears to help. Williams tackled the role with his typical brand of straight laughs tinged with pathos, and there are real layers to a character that anyone else could have easily written off. You saved me. You're worth saving, my dear. Oh, that's problematic. Teddy! Oh, man. Larry, relax. I'm wax. Teddy centered the film, and Williams' rapport with Ben Stiller kept the franchise going for a full trilogy. Number 15. Happy Feet Since his time as a student at Juilliard, people were blown away by Robin Williams' accents and voice work. Luckily, his multiple turns in animation allowed him to go nuts with wild voices. You got the most charisma of anybody. Oh. Put that ego away, Ramon. You're gonna hurt someone. Oh, <laughs> you're so jealous. Just a moment. I hear people wanting something. Me! Happy Feet is a great example of this, with Williams playing a slew of characters, namely Ramon, Cletus, Lovelace, and the narrator. The joy he gets from doing voices is clear in every frame. His characters are equally ridiculous despite really feeling like different people. It's a great coming-of-age film for young kids, with plenty of laughs for their parents. <laughs> this stranger before me. He doubts my powers. He compares me to a squat. Number 14, Jumanji. 20 years before The Rock tackled the dangers of Jumanji with big grins and bigger muscles, Robin Williams did it with a cape made of leaves and one heck of a beard. Jumanji was a big deal for 90s kids. I've seen things you've only seen in your nightmares. Things you can't even imagine. Things you can't even see. It was an adventure story, one that felt like it had never been done before and quickly cemented itself as a classic. With his typical blend of laughs and real emotion, Williams' genuine vibe helps audiences tap into their own fear centers. Whether running from animatronic lions or CGI monkeys, Williams' Alan Parrish acts and reacts totally genuinely in every situation. He isn't an action star, he is a relatable everyman in a crazy situation, a feat that really set this fantasy adventure apart. I'm sorry. 26 years buried in the deepest, darkest jungle, and I still became my father. It's okay, come here, I'm sorry. Hey, it's all right. Number 13, The World According to Garp. After doing Popeye, Williams decided to pivot and take on the titular role in the drama The World According to Garp. It's a satirical melodrama that covers a man's entire life, from his unusual beginnings to his bittersweet end. Remember. What, my love? Everything you Yes, my love. Garp is the son of Jenny Fields, a feminist icon played by Glenn Close in her feature debut. The film is a fascinating window into modern American history, taking on politics, gender, and gender identity. Unlike many films of the era, it actually holds up really well years later. Both Garp and his mother face violent political radicalization, a theme that resonates even more in the age of social media. I want my mother alive again. And since I can't have that, and since I miss her terribly, I want to be around as many people as possible who feel the same way as I do. Number 12, Moscow on the Hudson. In Moscow on the Hudson, Williams plays Vladimir Ivanov, a musician with the Moscow Circus who defects on a trip to New York City. You must to help me. I want political asylum. I'm a security officer. I'm not a policeman. Then, then, then they will send me to mental hospital. What do they do? KGB, they will kill me. All right, hold it. The film is an earnest examination of immigration, politics, and loneliness. Vlad struggles to survive in the Soviet Union, so when his circus performs in New York, he takes the opportunity to escape. But life in New York in the 1980s wasn't so easy. Vlad grapples with the language barrier and tries to find work and love. He's even at one point violently mugged. Moscow on the Hudson is a very particular slice of life, but its story is universal. I could hold it. <laughs> I could caress it. 
I loved my misery. Number 11, One Hour Photo. In One Hour Photo, Robin Williams cranks the creep factor up to 11. Am I talking to a brick wall? Did I tell you to touch her? No, I don't want you to touch her. If you touch her again, I stab you in the heart. Before the age of digital photography, almost every strip mall in America had a one hour photo. Williams is Cy, a photo lab technician who becomes obsessed with the lives of his customers. He lives vicariously through their photos, fantasizing that he's a part of their lives. Cy's obsession takes a dark turn as he begins to stalk the Yorkin family. The Chicago Sun-Times praised Williams' ability to portray such a, quote, open-faced, smiling madman. Things that children shouldn't do. You would never take disgusting, sick, degrading pictures of your children doing these things. Though he's played villains before and since, One Hour Photo is arguably Robin's darkest character. Number 10, Awakenings. Unlike many Robin Williams characters, Dr. Sayer in Awakenings isn't particularly funny. He's a shy doctor utterly dedicated to helping catatonic patients. You think these are signs of normal behavior? Yeah, because he's in that place. Oh, is that it? Yes. We wake him up and then we lock him up in a cage. That's not paranoia. That's a fact. His fellow doctors and nurses, though, treat patients as little more than furniture. Sayer tests an exciting new drug on one of his patients, Robert De Niro's Leonard. When Leonard wakes up from his catatonia, the test is expanded to other patients. The results are temporary, and each patient eventually falls back into their original state. It's a sad ending, but Sayer manages to find the silver lining. He teaches his colleagues and the audience to remember to see the humanity in everyone. With work, play, friendship, family, these are the things that matter. Number nine, World's Greatest Dad. World's Greatest Dad is a unique comedy in Robin Williams' filmography. Similar to Dear Evan Hansen, his character stumbles into fame through the death of another. When his son dies in an embarrassing accident, he stages the body and writes a note. In the aftermath, he and his son receive the attention he's always desired as a struggling writer. You know, I'm not gonna pretend that I know what's going on in the mind of a teenager. All I'm saying is Kyle made a mistake. If you're that depressed, reach out to someone. The film was Robin Williams' first collaboration with his longtime friend, director Bobcat Goldthwaite. Goldthwaite was initially worried about the awkwardness of directing one of his best friends, but as it turned out, they worked well together in a professional setting too. Though the film flopped at the box office, it was well-reviewed by critics. I liked it. Really? You're a good writer. I think you should keep writing. Thanks, Andrew, I will. Number eight, The Fisher King. The Fisher King begins with a focus on Jeff Bridges' character, a radio shock jock. His careless words inspire real life violence. One night, he faces a truly dark night of the soul walking the streets of New York City, where he's mugged and then saved by Robin Williams Perry, a person living with a mental health condition on the streets. Respect for all kinds of life, a nice ball movement on a regular basis, and a navy blazer. Oh, one more thing. Never take your eye off the ball. Oh. Perry believes he is a knight on a quest for the Holy Grail. The two strike up an unlikely friendship, helping each other climb out of a pit of grief and guilt. At the end, their bond allows them each to find forgiveness. While the subject matter is dark, the film is a meditation on hope and redemption. When her robe is unfurled, she will show you the world if you step up and tell her where. For a dime you can see Kankakee or Perry or Washington crossing the Delaware. Robin Williams received his third Oscar nomination for Perry. Number seven, The Birdcage. It's hard to argue that any Robin Williams film had more long-term impact than The Birdcage. The movie is a remake of the French and Italian classic La Cage aux Folles. Armand is a gay drag club owner in South Beach. His son returns home to tell his dad that he's engaged. Tell me it's all right. It's all right, I always dreamed you'd do this, it's just not so soon. Unfortunately, his fiance is the daughter of a conservative senator. Before hosting the senator, Armand must learn to pretend to be a heteronormative family. Comedy gold ensues. The Birdcage was one of the first major films to help normalize gay relationships and families in America. We lied to you 
Barbara and I and everybody live for us. These are my parents. This is my wife. It tells us that being macho is not the only way to be a good man, and that love is love. The ripples of that impact still resonate today. Number six, Insomnia. Insomnia is another film where Williams gets to show off his bad guy bona fides. Directed by Christopher Nolan, Insomnia is a remake of a Norwegian thriller. Williams plays Finch, a murderous crime writer in a game of cat and mouse with Al Pacino, an LAPD detective. I'm not a murderer any more than you are. Well, then why don't we get together, you know, just, just talk, have a few beers, whatever. Yeah, throw a little gas on the fire, huh? Yeah. The two circle and chase each other, neither entirely good or bad. The backdrop is a land of midnight sun in a remote Alaskan town. Critics were impressed by how well Williams held his own across from a heavyweight like Al Pacino. I knew they'd connect me to Kay eventually. I could handle them. They never look in the eyes of a killer. Killing changes you, you know that. It's not guilt. It's clear where Chris Nolan learned to cast actors against type. It's a skill he would employ again six years later with Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. Number five, Good Morning Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam! Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Time to rock it from the Delta to the DMZ. Thanks to MASH, Good Morning Vietnam found a receptive audience for an irreverent military comedy. Williams stars as Adrian Cronauer, an airman who wins over American troops as a disc jockey during the Vietnam War. Beloved by enlisted men and despised by his superiors, Cronauer makes a big splash. His superiors eventually try to get him killed by routing him through a hot zone. Good Morning Vietnam explores how to maintain personal integrity and real friendship during war. The army knows about your brother. I have to leave the country because of my association with him. They have pictures of him. If they find him, they will shoot him. If you want to continue to have a brother, you take me to him now! Williams was universally praised and received his first ever Oscar nomination. Plus, the movie has a stellar soundtrack. Number four, Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire is one of several of Williams' movies to get turned into hit theater adaptations. It's no wonder why. The film is classic Robin Williams. If you've been living under a rock for the past 30 years, the movie follows a down-on-his-luck voice actor desperate to reconnect with his family. Mrs. Hillard, I presume? Yes, I'm Miranda Hillard. Euphigenia Doubtfire. Oh, yes. Won't you please come in? Using his industry connections to give him professional prosthetic makeup, Daniel Hillard manages to pose as a Scottish-ish nanny for his own children. As with many of the performer's endeavors, Mrs. Doubtfire is a comedy with real pain and conflict at its center. It's a story about missing what you've got once it's gone. William's character goes to absurd but endearing lengths to get his family back. I love them with all my heart. And the idea of someone telling me I can't be with them, I can't see them every day, it's like someone saying, I, I can't have air. I can't live without air and I, I can't live without them. Number three, Dead Poet Society. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Hollywood seemed to have a miniature obsession with movies about boys' boarding schools. Before Scent of a Woman, School Ties, and Toy Soldiers, it was 1989's Dead Poet Society that seemed to kickstart the trend of prep school backdrops. William stars as Mr. Keating, an English teacher who uses poetry to inspire his students. We're going to talk about Shakespeare as someone who writes something very interesting. Now, many of you have seen Shakespeare done very much like this. Oh, Titus, bring your friend hither. Through Mr. Keating, we see the importance of the arts and self-expression. They are tools that can help young people learn who they are meant to be in an otherwise cold, unfeeling world. Mr. Keating ultimately pays for his insight with his job, but we bet his students never forgot the lesson. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Number two, Aladdin. Hey! 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. Before Aladdin, voice acting in kids' cartoons was typically left to voice actors. Big-name Hollywood stars stayed away. But this role changed everything. 
Aladdin made hundreds of millions at the box office, and Disney continued to rake in the big bucks with home video, toys, video games, and even a Tony-winning Broadway musical. I'm in the mood to help you, dude. You ain't never had a friend like me. No, my. No, no. The film itself is the pinnacle of 1990s Disney, and William's genie was beloved by multiple generations. His popularity led to a real shift in the industry, finally solidified by Tim Allen and Tom Hanks in Toy Story a few years later. Big names in animated films are now the norm, though it's difficult to hold a candle to William's performance as genie. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Good Will Hunting Good Will Hunting is a hard scrabble drama about a math genius from South Boston, which catapulted writers and stars Matt Damon and Ben Affleck to superstardom. Still, it wasn't an easy road to get there. The film went through development hell for years. You've never looked at a woman and been totally vulnerable. Known someone that could level you with her eyes. Feeling like God put an angel on earth just for you. It cycled through multiple production companies before getting made. When casting, they wanted a major talent to play Sean, the moral heart of the film, and the script eventually made its way to Williams. He loved it so much that he agreed to a massive multi-million dollar pay cut. When asked about it, he said, quote, I had to. They would have made this movie without me. It's too good not to be made. His instincts paid off. After four nominations in the span of a decade, Robin Williams finally won his Oscar. Just tell him, sorry. I had to go see about a girl. Well. Son of a bitch. He stole my life. I don't even know if I do a Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Please say hello in the comments below. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.